Notify Kevin as required by your company SEPs. Ditching push button to on closes all valves below the aircraft waterline, such as ramp air inlet, avionics ventilation inlet and extractor, pack and cargo isolation. At 500 feet, announce. This is the captain. Brace for impact. Flat for a target pitch of 11 degrees and the slowest possible approach speed. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel, Captain SQ, where we're going to discuss on Airbus systems, emergency procedures, and supplementary techniques on how to fly the plane. A320 ditching made easy. Understanding important steps and reducing risk. Disclaimer, always refer to your company manuals, this video is merely a guide. And before we start, do bash the like button, only takes 0.1 second to do so. Subscribe and press the notification bell for more updates. Alright, let's dive in. So when do we ditch the aircraft? Bear in mind, it is an extreme situation and most probably all options are considered and exhausted. Let's look at the scenarios where you need to ditch. I can think of three cases. Do comment below if you have more ideas than these three. Number one, uncontainable cabin or cockpit fire. Number two, dual engine failure that is caused by fuel starvation or contamination. Do check out my video on dual engine failure soon. Number three, dual engine failure due to mechanical failure, bird strike or volcanic ash. The crew will initially follow the appropriate QRH procedure before entering the QRH ditching procedure. Example, if you have a dual engine failure, it is prudent to look at all engines fail checklist first to try and recover the engines. Okay, let us dive in into each of the three scenarios I just mentioned. Number one, ditching following uncontainable cabin or cockpit fire. Should the crew decide that this may be an option, they should descend as soon as possible to below 10,000 feet. This will allow them to depressurize the cabin, open the DV windows and ramp air valve to aid ventilation and allow smoke removal. If you know what DV windows stands for, do comment in the section below. In addition, should conditions become worse, it will take less time to execute the ditching. It will be a critical moment as you would need to decide fast. Next, let us look into number two, ditching following dual engine failure due to fuel starvation or contamination. With this ditching procedure, the crew will be left in emergency electrical configuration. Only VHF-1 and HF-1 are available to contact air traffic control. Flaps 3 should be selected for landing. However, the actual aircraft configuration due to specific secondary failure is slapped at 2 and flaps 0. This will give a faster final ditching speed. The RA and landing lights are unavailable and if you are flying at night, it will be hard to estimate the height above water. Finally, number 3, ditching following dual engine failure due to mechanical failure, bird strike or external weather conditions. With this ditching procedure, you can start the APU as there is still fuel remaining, supplying the aircraft electrical network and maintaining aircraft pressurization. The crew may also consider using the yellow electric pump and PTU to lower the flaps and slats, reducing the ditching impact speed. That is a rough overview on things to consider based on the three scenarios. Now let us dive in detail on QRH ditching procedure. The ditching procedure for crews can be found under the section abnormal and emergency procedures. The first two actions are to notify ATC and set the emergency code on the transponder. Use 121.5 on VHF and 243 on HF. Set 7700 on the transponder. This notifies emergency services to start the rescue and recovery process. In electrical emergency configuration, HF2 and HF3 will be lost. So automatic ACAS position reporting to ATC will be unavailable. When communicating with ATC, inform them of your latitude and longitude and your heading, distance and time from that point to the intended ditching. Example will be Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Call sign Captain SQ, dual engine failure, position 8.3405 South, 115.0920 East, 
estimate ditching 60 nautical miles east of this position at time 1630. Failure to do so may result in the rescue services looking over an area of up to 25,000 square miles. And if you remember your mathematics in school, it is pi r square. Next line is cabin preparation. Brief the cabin crew. The cabin crew will need time to prepare the cabin and will need briefing as soon as possible. It is possible that the airborne time available may only be 20 minutes from your cruising altitude. In electrical emergency configuration at night, only emergency lighting will be available so the cabin may be dark and torches will be required. With dual engine failure, the cabin will depressurize and the oxygen mask will drop. PA to passengers, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking, dot dot dot. Please refer to your company standard announcement text. Copy preparation, secure all loose items and before securing yourself in the seat, consider putting on your life vest which is behind your seat but do not inflate it. So how are you going to get it? Maybe you can ask your cabin crew for help. Let's discuss this in the comments section. Lock the seat belt. Turning the GPWS and terrain to off will prevent distracting warnings occurring as you are ditching. Signs to on and the galley to off helps the cabin crew to secure the aircraft. Landing elevation and barrel are set to ensure cabin is depressurized on ditching. With the loss of both engines, the aircraft will start to depressurize. As mentioned, both crew and passenger oxygen masks may be needed. Set to an inch, which is the height above sea level, and this can be obtained from air traffic control for the local barrel reference. Disregard normal checklist. Let us move on to emergency locator transmitter ELT set to on. When transmitting, the light will be on and it will transmit on 121.5 on VHF, 243 MHz and 406 MHz. The ELT will send out an automatic signal that can be picked up by satellites, other aircrafts, ground stations which can help in the rescue emergency services to locate your ditching site. Let us move on to the approach and ditching. This section prepares the crew for ditching in good conditions with clear visibility of the water. And question, why do we need to keep the gear up for ditching? Do comment below if you know the answer. Use maximum available flaps and slats. And in this ditching procedure, the QRH mentioned to use max available slats and flaps. However, if you look at the all engine fail checklist, the recommended flap setting is at flaps too. Why is there a difference? Well, do comment below if you know the answer. In strong winds, ditch into the wind and in light wind, ditch parallel to the swell. In this critical stage and especially at night, it will be hard to redirect your plane for an ideal water landing. At 2,000 feet above ground level, the cabin pressure selector should already be in auto. This action confirms that the aircraft will be depressurized following a ditching, allowing the doors to be open. Turning the bleeds off reduces water coming into the cabin via the air conditioning system. Notify cabin as required by your company SEPs. Ditching push button to on closes all valves below the aircraft waterline, such as ramp air inlet, avionics ventilation inlet and extractor, pack and cargo isolation. At 500 feet, announce. This is the captain. Brace for impact. Flat for target pitch of 11 degrees and the slowest possible approach speed. The minimum control speed is approximately 150 knots. Once the aircraft has impacted the water, allow it to decelerate before performing these actions and these actions are only important if the engines or the APU are running. At touchdown, all engine masters off and the APU master switch will be set to off and after ditching, these actions are to secure the aircraft for an evacuation. Remember, only VHF1 is available as the aircraft is on battery power. A reminder will be to review my video on electrical emergency configuration. Push all fire push buttons, discharge all agents and the second agent in each engine requires AC power. Therefore, pushing the discharge button in this specific case does not achieve anything but it is not detrimental. Initiate the evacuation, check that the ELT is emitting, if not, switch on the transmitter 
and the rest of the actions will be done in accordance to your company safety emergency procedure manual and that's it for this video do like comment subscribe if you find this video useful thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video